Don't our, go away. Our bad. Whoops. We, we got to talking uh, after we stopped to record and realized there was a long list of things that we still had yet to discuss that were extremely interesting. And yeah. Charles agreed to stay with us. So, hey, keep listening. So we were down here uh, on the river years ago recording for the Mason Rhythm Aces. And uh, there was an electrical storm, so we had to stop recording. So the Muscle Shells Horns back in that period in the 70s, we shot craps a lot uh, before the session, after the session, during the session. So here, here at uh, Muscle Shells Sound, we used the pool table, and that was our crap table. So, uh, so the session got delayed because of the electrical storm, so we started playing craps. And Wayne Jackson from the Memphis Horns and Ben Colley from the Bar K's were both on the session with us. So there were six players, and we all started shooting craps. And I was the winner that day. I, th- I think I won like $1,200 or something, you know. So basically won everyone's session before we started the session, you know. So we got set up there in Studio B, and uh, I looked down the row, and every- no one seemed to be smiling. I said, I know what they're all thinking. You know, they're all thinking I'm playing for free today. So so I couldn't leave that alone. So uh, Steve Melton said, everybody ready to go? And I said, well, Steve, there's something wrong with my chair. You know, my chair's crooked. It's lopsided. And he said, well, I'll get you new. And I said, wait a minute. And I stood up and I took my wallet out and sat back down. I said, oh, the chair's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, That's my big memory of that session. Oh, that was well. the session we recorded Lipstick Traces. Oh, really? Right and that was done in B? I believe it was B, yeah. Yeah. You uh, worked also with Millie Jackson here. Um, yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh she was always produced by Brad Shapiro, mm-hmm. producer who 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 also did the uh, the uh, James Brown album we played on. Yeah, he also produced that. There were never charts, always head sessions, so we would come up with parts, and then uh, Brad and Millie would argue about the parts, and then we would come up with another part, and they would argue about that, and we were always on the clock, getting three hour sessions, so we didn't care. <laughs> So you were just cool, like, hey, y'all argue yeah, away, but, we're getting but we paid. Did, you know, did a bunch of albums for her, and she was great. You know, she was very, uh, used very colorful language. We did quite a few of them. I really liked working for her. She was. Well, what about the James Brown, Too Funky in here, original yeah, we, disco man? Part of that was done, I think, in Nashville, too, right? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, it all wasn't done here. I know I, that. I, I'm not. I'm not that aware of, of the tracking. I know they did some of the tracking here, but we did the horns here at Muscle Shell Sound on the river. Again, no charts, and I think Brad Shapiro, who was producing it, had. I guess he had a hard deadline, and we we were working really late. I mean, really late into the evening, and his production on it, I recall, would consist of queuing up a track and we would start working up parts and he would go to sleep on the couch there in front of the board and then we would put the parts down and double them and then we'd wake him up and he'd listen to him and say that's good do the next one you know that sounds <laughs> all too familiar. he would go back to sleep you know well i mean you're working those kind of hours you know that's actually probably good that he was doing that that way he was alert when it was time to push record but yeah, yeah. so was, was a, it just the one song that you guys did? No, or was I mean, it, I, I can't remember. I mean, we, we, I can't remember exactly how many tracks we did. No, we did. That's a really did, cool thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. James yeah. wasn't here. No, he all wasn't that. here. I, I don't know where he did his vocals and never met him. You know, uh, I can't remember if it was before or after that. We were supposed to, when the Muscle Shows Horns did our first album in 76, we had some shows down in Florida. I, I think our record was maybe number one on the r&b stations in mm-hmm. miami our single born to get down and mm-hmm. so we went down there several times that summer to do shows and 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 one one trip we would take a basden bus down there you know and go where we needed to go i mean one time we flew down i think but uh we were supposed to open two different shows for james brown that second time we went down and uh he was a no-show for both of them so oh wow <laughs> okay, really? yeah. well, shows got sucks. canceled you know so uh so we never never really met him. It's funny, uh, years later, uh, I was playing piano in uh, Ken Waters' jazz quintet every Saturday night at the Hilton in Huntsville. And uh, they had a little jazz festival over there one weekend, and Fred Wesley, the trombonist that played on, on all that later uh, James Brown stuff, he was the, uh, the, the artist, I mean, I guess the featured artist at this local jazz festival. 
So I, I played uh, jazz geeks with him for like three days one weekend, you know, and I introduced myself. I said, you know, I, I played on uh, the Too Funky in here. And he said, oh, I was wondering who that was. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a really cool track. Did you work on any of the, the – the Joe Cocker or yeah, the Joe Cocker, yeah, we that's some on cool that. stuff. They had, uh, you know, they took that project away from I can't remember who it was it was it Alan Tucson or somebody. Uh, they started that album I think in New Orleans, and they had the Ray Charles horn section on a lot of those tunes, mm. and they zapped them off of there and and put the Muscle Shells horns really? on. Really? Yeah, and they uh, they took a couple of things off. They played them for us, and, and I thought, man, I, I like that. I like the way that sounds. Yeah. They said, I said, you don't want to keep that? And they said, nope, hit the red button. Well, <laughs> 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 wow. On the lines of um, things that were redone, did you play on George Michael's? Uh, no. Help me, help me, Dan, help me. No, I never played for George Michael. Careless Whisper. So, so the answer's no, but yeah, but but the horns were done and, right here. The and, Joe Cocker right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the George Michael thing was done, and it, there was two different versions, and the one that was recorded here never got released. I don't think. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but, but anyway, that's why I asked that. So, okay. You know, I I, I read that uh, the, the Stones tried to recut Brown Sugar several times mm-hmm. after they cut it here and. Just never, never like, never got what they got here. You know. Did you do any stuff with the Bob Dylan stuff or Bob Seger? Yeah. You got, I mean, they, yeah, they we had played a on the, uh, the before Seger. he really hit it big. We played on the Catman do, you know. Oh Bob. yeah, and I, I think I remember doing the horns on that at the Studio B there on Second Street. Okay, yeah. Uh, 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 and um, who else did you ask about? Bob Dylan. Oh yeah, uh, we played on Slow Train Coming. Yeah. And before that, um, I was either still in college or just out of college, but uh, they were still at 3614, and we uh, went in to do this album, and Wexler was there. And uh, I remember uh, getting out of my car in the parking lot and seeing these two uh, guys sitting in, the, sit, sitting in a van, and going, like, who are those guys? And we went in, and it was uh, for this guy, Garrett, Barry Goldberg, you know, who later produced mm-hmm. uh, Percy Sledge, mm-hmm. you know still still very active and uh at some point one of the guys i saw in the van came in the control room and sat next to wexler and, and i'm looking at this guy and said that looks a lot like bob dylan <laughs> but <laughs> surely I, they would have told me if bob dylan was here and so we're working on the tune of course no chart and at some point wexler says hey charlie come in here you know i come in here and he says i hey this is bob dylan he wants to hum you a line you know <laughs> and and this was at <laughs> The original fourteen, yeah. Okay, so Bob Dylan was there. Yeah, he was co-producing the Barry Goldberg album with Wexler. Yeah. So that's the first time I met him. I've uh, always heard Bob was not at that building, but apparently he was. Yeah. So there we go. We learned. Yeah, something yeah. Today. Now yeah. when he, now his albums were cut down right on the river, yeah. But he was involved and, in things. Uh, I wasn't there. involved the second album he did here. Just yeah, just the slow Saved and Slow Train yeah. Coming, both great records. Were you involved in any of the Julian Lennon stuff? No. Okay. I'm going down the list yeah, of people yeah, he here. Was here too, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about George Martin? He was here for I think yeah, a Doctor yeah. Hook thing. Yeah, were you uh, involved in that? Was was it Doctor Hook? Was, was that's what I've heard. I might be wrong. Well, I mean, we worked a lot for Doctor Hook. In fact, uh, we're the reason Doctor Hook came to Muscle Shows because the Muscle Shows horns worked for uh, for Ron Hafkin for Doctor Hook up oh, in uh, okay. up in uh, in Nashville. It seemed like we were at Lee Hazelwood's studio. Okay. I think well, it was called The Pond. I, think. I, don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I might know. be wrong. And uh, so we worked, and we uh, we talked up Muscle Shows, so they decided to come down here. You know. The same thing with the Oak Ridge Boys. We worked for the Oak Ridge Boys at Woodland in Nashville, where we recorded Elvira. So Elvira was recorded at Woodland? At Woodland. Not Nash- here. No, okay, no. I've always heard the it was The only connection here. with Muscle Shows are the Muscle Shows horns. Okay. So was it nothing cut here? Yeah. Or the horns were after, cut? After we met them and the producer, Ron Chancey, yeah. for the Oak Ridge Boys, right. I get the two Rons mixed up, they came to fame. And we, we, cut, we cut Bobby Sue, you know, at fame. I don't know if they ever came to Muscle Show Sound, but uh, Bobby Sue is the one they got sued over because uh, uh, Bobby Sue sounded so much like uh, – like Yakety Yak, you know, like 
like the coasters. Mm-hmm. Yep. And in fact, it sounded so much like it. Harvey played the same solo King Curtis play. <laughs> and they got sued by Lieber and Stoller, who yeah. we also worked for one time up at New York. The only oh, wow. time I worked at Electric uh, Lady Studio. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about Electric Lady. That's a that's a bucket list I got to yeah. go, go to. You know, I, uh, you know they were producing a, a female singer, and I cannot remember her name to this day. But uh, you know, I was expecting you know the guys that wrote Yakety Yak and Charlie Brown. I was expecting these kind of just you know real uh, I don't know guys with Brooklyn accents or something. You know, I came in. They were very erudite guys. You know, had a sweater draped over his back and drinking <laughs> red wine. <laughs> they weren't they weren't funky guys. They were very you know like. Like yuppies, you know. Oh wow! Not expecting that at all. No, 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 not at all. Uh, getting back to Bobby Sue, so it sounded so much like yak the yak. Lever and Stoller sue them, sued them, and Harvey had to give a deposition. They came down, took Harvey lunch, and took a deposition from him. <laughs> <laughs> and really? they uh, Lever and Stoller won the lawsuit, and uh, Oak Ridge boys had to pay out some money, so. You know, we worked with uh, William Lee several times at the Hall of Fame and elsewhere. And then when when he was inducted, you know, the Oak Ridge Boys all came and sang, you know. And we were, uh, of course, we were doing Elvira and Bobby Sue and uh, William Lee's son, Rusty Golden, was his MD and was playing piano, you know. So Rusty told me this story. He says, yeah, we were out in Las Vegas one time and the sax player was just improvising some kind of solo on Bobby Sue. And he said, Dad said, play what's on the record, son. It's bought and paid for. <laughs> and they lost the lawsuit. Yeah. Wow. So uh, so I was, you know, I was the band leader on these Hall of Fame shows. So uh, I, uh, Sorry. I, I went over to, Dan. I went over to William Lee. I said, you, you see that tenor player up there? And he said, yeah. He says, that's the guy that got you sued. I'll <laughs> 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 help to get you sued. Yeah. Wow. You got to be careful with that stuff, man. You yeah, know, it's a pretty, pretty well-known horn line. You yeah, know? It just it just is what it is. I mean, everybody that knows nothing about music knows that. I mean, it's re- easily recognizable. I got this thing I'm thinking about. It sounds a little bit like Careless Whisper. I don't think anybody will recognize it though. Yeah. <laughs> well, so like Bob Dylan, what was working with him like? I mean, well, I've heard um, a lot of quirky things about him over he, he the years. He was very quiet, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean the mo- most I talked to him was when Wexler asked him to hum me a lick. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the most I talked to him. He wasn't the you know, kind of person that would just come in and chit-chat, you know, just very quiet. I mean, you know, he was there when we worked on his album, too, but just uh, didn't hear much from him about anything. He just, I mean, he sat there pretty quiet, you know. When we realized, uh, as soon as we pushed stop on the record, that there were several things that we had not discussed, and we just got to talking about it, and was like, well, we should probably push record again. Yeah, so. I was wondering if you were just going to try and hide this in there somewhere, like try to find a natural break, nah, or let's just are we just going to cop to it? We're just going to cop to it. Let it be what it is. <laughs> well, cool. Thanks again. My pleasure. We're Very really done this time. We we're, we're actually really done. done. <laughs> Maybe. Holy cow, this was really cool. Um, I especially enjoyed the fact that we we pushed stop on the record and got to talking about some things that it's just like, man, are you cool with with, the, with, with, with us pushing record again and talking The interview a bit wasn't more? over. We no, thought the interview it was. was not over. And even when we stopped again, I thought of some things that I want to make mention of uh, now um, that – I should have asked him about. It's, this guy has been involved in so many things over the years. Uh, Andreas Werner, who's involved with uh, Crazy Chester Records, he's heavily involved with doing a lot of things um, with Muscle Shoals and is involved with a lot of things in Nashville as well. It's where he lives. Um, great guy. Would love to get him on the podcast. He also has a podcast, so check him out. I think it's Crazy Chester podcast i'm not 100 percent. maybe crazy chester records podcast but shouldn't be too hard to find uh but anyway give him a listen man he's got some great interviews as well so plug for him yeah and, and I'm, uh, I'm really hoping that y'all out there listening to this right now if you if you didn't know who charles was before now you do and oh yeah i, I really you know that was part of the idea from this podcast from the beginning was to to bring in some of the 
some of the pieces that don't get the accolades they yeah. deserve to get that don't get the attention they deserve. Well, he's also massively involved in environmentalism as well, which, which is, is near and dear to both of us, especially kudos. because it's, it's our you. local area. Yes. And uh, yeah, this was really cool. So hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Stick around for our next episode and be some more uh, really cool, exciting things for you to hear. Yeah. Tell your friends, share us on social media, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. Uh, hey, for a dollar a month on the Patreon, you can get access to loads of wow. bonus content. Uh, we're we're populating that more and more every week, I want to say. Uh, yeah. You can get episodes a week early if you just can't get enough. Uh, hey, all of this, you know, for a dollar a month. And the podcast is free. It's always going to be free. But if you feel like supporting us and getting a little bit of extra for your third of a cup of coffee. Or if you just want to support uh, yeah. what we're doing. I mean, this is not free for us to put out. It does cost us, which is fine. You know, we're cool with that. It's we a thing what we, we were getting we, into. Yeah, it's a thing we enjoy and want to do. And a service we want to provide for ourselves and, and the community and, and you guys that are listening. So thank you, most of all, to you guys who listen and tell your friends and enjoy this. Uh, give us feedback. We need that. Uh, it helps us a lot. It helps us be better. If you guys have ideas, um, suggestions, please fire them at us. We, we, we very much welcome that. And also... Is it not great to have Dan Williams back being co-host? This has been fun. I've missed you, man. You've, yeah, we've had too many episodes where you're not around, man. I feel lonely. I know, I know. So well, I know everybody's tired of just hearing me talk. So, <laughs> and I know you guys listening to the podcast. You know, you're you're getting it once a week, and you don't necessarily know how many of these episodes are recorded, when they're recorded, how they're recorded. You know, I'm, I'm a teacher, and it got to be the really busy part of the semester, and yeah, it just got to where I, I was not able well, to we break off. we couldn't line up schedules. So, yeah, I mean, it it's just, just, you know, it is same what it thing. Is. I was installing this console, so it was just lots Which is of so things cool. didn't line up. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Fun. Enjoying it. Hey, thank you guys. Stick around for more. Peace. Stay greedy. <laughs>